far as the racism part of it, since 1990, only three guys that won the MVP that wasn't top 10 in scoring. Do you know who those three were? Steve Nash, Jokic, Dirk Nowinski. No. <laughs> what do those guys have in common? This idea that Dirk and Steve Nash were favored to win the MVP because they're white. Um, you stopped short at 1990. That was your cutoff point for players to win MVP not in the top 10 in points per game, which is a stupid stat to judge MVP on. 1990, Magic won it. In 89, Magic won it. 87, Magic won it. When it comes to MVP voting, 80% of the voters are white Americans. Just because you may be rooting for someone of your own kind doesn't make you a racist. No one should have to explain to Kendrick Perkins that sports are meant to unify regardless of color, creed, ethnicity, or background. No one should have to explain to Kendrick Perkins that his basketball takes shouldn't be based off his desire for representation within his race. But the Nikola Jokic racism has reached its peak. Stay tuned for the full basis behind why a racist, shockingly still employed ESPN analyst is backing up his narrative with open bias regarding Nikola's skin color and how it impacted his MVP chances. Just 19.9% of you watching are subscribed though, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Aaron Gordon showed up to race horses in Serbia, likely to consolidate the two-time MVP, given sadly the biggest theme regarding the all-time great run from Serbian horse racer turned basketball player Nikola Jokic has been the blasphemous hate and racism that's continued to pour in from the mainstream. For an evidently humble pure hooper to face such idiocy on the daily is extremely off-putting, but it's something ESPN can put up with. After strongly implying, to say the ultimate least, that Steve Nash, Dirk Nowitzki, and Nikola Jokic won the award because they're white, Perk is doubling down. Let's be clear that his statement about Nowitzki, Jokic, and Nash being the only non-top 10 scorers to win MVP since 1990 is incorrect. Dirk Nowitzki was tied with Tracy McGrady for 10th in scoring during his MVP season, and as Reddick mentioned, some famous white guy named Magic Johnson won consecutive MVP trophies in both 89 and 90 without even being top 14 in scoring. Jokic was also number 6 in points per game during his 2022 MVP season, and number 5 in total points scored the year before that in his first MVP season. But we have to look at the bigger picture because that's all that matters here. On the Pat Bev podcast a few days ago, speaking on his grouping up of players based on skin color, here was the full clip of Perkins addressing his takes. For as the racism part of it, <clears throat> for as the racism part of it, the only thing that I hated, I love a good, I love a good debate. Pat to tell you, man, first take, you gonna get into a heated debate. So me and J.J. got into a heated debate, man, and I love J.J. Reddick, right? Here's the thing. <clears throat> the only problem that I have with J.J. is when he said, I accuse people of being racist. I never accuse nobody of being racist, bro. Like, accusing somebody, and correct me if I'm wrong, racist is that you hate someone of another color. Am I right or am I wrong? That's racist, right? That sounds right. Yeah, that's that's right. So I never said that. Now, racially biased? Okay, cool. I told, like I told JJ off, off record. Bro, when Obama ran for president, I know black people out of my community that never voted in their life. Me, personally, I never voted in my life. You know, I rushed to go vote for Obama because I actually wanted to see a black president in office. Does that make me racist? Does that make a black person racist? No, it don't. And it happens like you ain't doing it intentionally. But just because you may be rooting for someone of your own kind doesn't make you a racist. And that was my only problem with what I had with J.J. said. Me and them talked about that off of camera because I'm like, bro. The last thing I'm doing is accusing somebody of being a racist. First of all, let's acknowledge how insane it is that Perkins went through an entire segment slowly admitting to us that he didn't endorse Jokic because he wasn't black. That was an admission you'd have never thought would have come to light. Addressing the last point from Kendrick in his response podcast, did he state the exact verbiage of quote unquote, the MVP voters are racist? No. Did he stack up three players who were white and directly imply that MVP voters have been favoring white players over black players for the past 30 years. Yes. It's one thing to root for quote unquote your own kind. It's another to root against someone that isn't your quote unquote 
own kind. Perkins actively looked for ways to root against Jokic because of his race, with his proven to be out of thin air argument involving Nash, Nowitzki, and of course Jokic. Kendrick put three players of his opposing race together and put them down based off their very skin color. Not only did he accuse voters of racism, he was in fact racist all in one. It's impressive how off Perkins was in his argument in terms of both etiquette and statistics. More notably though, what kind of message is ESPN trying to send here by keeping Perkins around is my question. Anyone of the opposite race would lose their job in a split second if they uttered the comments he made. Perkins and the network which employs him are both primary figures covering the NBA. All of Perkins, ESPN, and in turn the world's most reputable basketball league lose a claim by the minute by keeping Keeping Kendrick around. ESPN's decision to hang on to Perkins shows that both the network and the NBA are willing to sacrifice respectability, all because Kendrick drives traffic in the algorithm. Hypocritical, and I promise you, won't surmount to great ratings in the future if action isn't taken in terms of firing ESPN analyst Kendrick Perkins. Nikola Jokic going on to win Denver the championship along with a unanimous finals MVP almost adds to the reasoning behind why Perkins should be fired. Don't get it twisted, it was a racist comment that should have been held accountable for in the first place. However, Jokic overcoming such a discriminatory comment that we're still talking about to this day adds to the irony of the take, and also opens up the door even further for people around the world to view the comments from Perkins as offensive, divisive, and or inaccurate. It's not even close to being too late for ESPN to make their move, as there's still another two months and change until the 23-24 season kicks off. Will Perkins be on the panel of analysts debating hoops on national TV again, though? If you think he will be, let me know down below. Just 19.9% .9 of you watching are subscribed, though, so please subscribe if you haven't already.